Afternoon everyone. Welcome back to my channel where I've got a really lovely slow stitch tutorial on how to do a lovely wren sitting on a mossy branch. I hope you really enjoy it. See you later. I'm going to do a little wren which I, I see them in the garden, I hear them more than I see them and they're just lovely little birds. So this piece of old um, cushion cover that I was using it's a really nice texture and there were some really lovely colours and I had a piece just enough for a page. I've marked out with my blue pen the finished size of the page and because I'm actually having to use my big hoop with my magnifier it wasn't quite big enough for me to stretch and so all I've done is uh, I've just used my machine to sew on these extension pieces so that it's actually big enough for me to put into the hoop. I've got this vintage leather glove that's all ruined and so what I've done I've taken my ink tense blocks and I've just painted part of it into more of a branch colour. I've got my rust dyed pieces of fabric which worked well before on the sparrow so I think they'll work well again. I've got velvet and um, old bits of wool skirt for leaves. This is a bit of grey cotton flannel. I've got my hood mounted and some pieces already cut out of my various bits of fabric. So the first thing, and I've, all I've done is I've drawn the wren and a branch. Uh, so my branch is going to go on here, like this. And I did want the thicker branch, but I'm definitely wanting to use those holes a bit. So I've cut two pieces out. I'm just sort of going to stitch them on with this bit of pearl cotton and I am utilising the holes just to come up and down with. I don't want to cover the whole thing in the leather because I feel it'll be quite hard to stitch through and I'm not bothered if these stitches end up showing or not. I just put them down where I want them to be and hope for the best. I like the fact that it's bringing in this extra texture. Originally I was going to do a bit of wool embroidery of a bird but the lichen and moss photograph that I took during my holiday just made me want to stitch moss and so I'm going to try and do a mossy branch for the wren to sit on. I've cut some sort of odd shapes out of this grey flannel because I want to try and make this look like it's covered in lichens and moss and so I've just cut this sort of irregular shape out and I'm going to stitch it down over here and then I've just just done them odd with the scissors and I feel as if I just layer them up I'll be able to make it look like lichen coming over the branch. I have got some grey in my needle. I just need to tack this underneath down Actually, I'm going to try now to put some of these little pieces on. And I do think that once they're on, because I won't want them to be totally flat and all one colour, I've got a feeling I'll be touching them with a bit of paint once they're on. I'm just going to manipulate them a little bit and take another stitch. I think I just can't help myself making things 3D. Go right down in the middle of that bit and then try and just I'm gonna try and just fold it a little so that it just creases up and go straight back down again. Oh yes. That's that works well. 
I'll try that again. I'll come up the middle, take a little pinch and go back down. Just going to give a bit of movement. I'm really pleased with how the flannel has gone on. So I am just giving the whole thing a little bit of depth and dimension by just pushing a bit of ink tense pe um, paint onto the edges and it'll dry as I'm working everything else in. That's not too bad. Okay, I'll leave that as it is, I think. So, moss next. So I've got these, which I did get at the wool show I was at earlier in the year, and they were specifically for making the moss for the mushroom sculpture that I still haven't done, because I thought it was already very mossy looking. And so I'm going to use some of these, and I'm just going to couch them down, I think. Well, this seems to be working very well indeed. It's so knobbly, it's like a little boucle wool. But I'm just literally couching this down, however it comes. And I'm going to go over it with extra pieces. I'm just going to work my way up and down and around and about. And keep thickening things up as I go. Just keep looping it up and stitching it down. Put a bit down here. I definitely needed the holes in the leather. So this is actually flannel, vintage flannel. This is my rust dyed cotton and again a bit of vintage flannel that I've painted. So that is basically my wren. So I'll just move them to one side. I've got I've got a single strand of the grey wool. So I'm going to come up at the beak end and just start and get the fabric attached. I think I don't really need to make too much, too many stitches actually. I think I'm going to work down and then maybe come back up with some little fly stitches. I need some darker, darker thread on here but it all adds to texture so I think I can just come right the way down. Just thinking of the way the feathers are lying as I'm doing it. Before I go any further doing any more embroidery on it, I'll get the rest of the fabrics on first. Sometimes you just need a suggestion of feathers. You don't need to embroider every single one. And sometimes, dependent on the type of embroidery you're doing, you do want to do every single one. It just different styles and different days of the week make a difference to me as to what I'm wanting to do. I've put the tail on and I'm putting this other little cut out piece of fabric that is going to make the main body of the wren. And I'm just using little running stitches to attach it on. I want some nice stitches in here above the where the eye is going to go. I just want to take the stitches over the edge of the 
fabric so that you can sort of see little feathers popping up. I start with this pale grey again and I'm just going to start and, and let the, the colours mingle together in the way that I can see off the photograph. It's really windy here today. If you keep hearing cricks and cracks, it's, it's my doors. Uh, flexing with the wind. It's very sunny, it's very warm, but it's definitely autumnal windy weather. Now I've cut out a bit of the same grey flannel as I've used for the lichens and I'm just going to stitch it on with a couple of strands of cream stranded cotton. And the reason for that is that the the cruel wool is just slightly too thick for the detail that I'd like to get. But also I found another black bead which is going to be his eye. I'm going to come up right in the middle really. My bead. See if the placement looks good. Oh yes, I think so. I do another. Oops. I'll come up and go down through the bead again, just to keep it in. Right, I'm going to finish his eyebrow next and that's definitely, I've got a cream stranded cotton. I'm going to come right from his area of his beak and with shortish stitches I'm just going to put this eyebrow in. That looks pretty decent. I'm going to carry on using this um, stranded cotton to bring some pale feathers through the underneath of his beak. Just do some little seed stitches through here. Oh, he's got a bit of a speckly chin. I'm just putting the shadows in under the wren's tummy. So I haven't got a really dark brown in my cruel wools. So I've gone for a brown stranded and I'm using all six strands. And I'm just going to go back through here with some straight stitches to put the shadow in really. Don't mind if I'm crossing over some already down. I'll just finish this bit of thread off. I doing a bit more shadow under the wing. Just been putting some highlights in 
with this grey wool. It's sort of like um, black and white going along the edge of the wing. That'll do. I'll take some of these stitches down here again and just let them flow through. Don't want them to be too big. Just little little straight stitches adding texture. I wonder what you're all getting on with. While I'm stitching and my little wren. I have so many things that I've been trying to get on with as well as these. I sat down the other night just to knit that little frog that I've been seeing all over Instagram. I just It was so cute. I couldn't resist myself. And now I've decided that he would be quite good for Christmas presents too. So <laughs> I think there'll be a few more of them. But they don't take very long. And get it in the underneath of his beak. Just going to put the little black flecks in along where I put the highlights. It's these little tiny details that really make a difference. And there's actually a bit of black along the tip of his wing, I think. We'll just come in and do some straight stitching there. Sort of just go in as if it's the wing edge, the, the feather edges. I think that's what I'm trying to do. The, the ends of the wing feathers. I'm just putting some highlights on. I've gone up and down the tail. I just need to put the little flecks where the wing feathers have a different colour going. It's just sort of a little line here. I'm just going to put loosely in. And then I'm going to work back up the breast with this nice cream. Just going to come and use this colour along the top of the beak. I already put a couple of lines in so I knew how long I was going to make it. I think if I just do this line here, right to the tip. I've changed into my uh, variegated flower thread. I'm just going to shadow the underneath of his beak. I'm going to put his nostril in. I think just a single strand, a single tiny stitch will do that. Just a few stitches can make a big difference in making things, something not seem so flat. So putting shadows in is part of that. And then I'll work this dark thread through the top of his head down along onto the wing. And I think that might be it. I'll get his legs done. I think now I can just do a little bit of speckle on the top end of his wings. Just 
or a little seed stitch really. I'm just dotting them about. I want to try and get his legs on now. I'm going to start here with the black and I'm just going to try and maybe suggest them. So I think last time I struggled with the legs a bit. So I'm going to put, I'm just going to put the outline in. I feel as if I just want to be a coward and hide his feet but we'll see whether I can get them onto the onto the moss or even just a suggestion of them. I think I find the bird's feet hard to do. Well, they don't look too bad at the minute. Quite helpful having moss for them to sink down into, that's what I'm going to say. Just get this second leg in. So I'll just see what I do. I'll right, just try and thicken these claws up and see what it looks like. I've got a bit of gold, two strands of like a gold in, in my needle. Just to give a bit of suggestion of the yellow of his beak. I just want the beak to come into there so it's not just stuck on the end of his face. It actually does look like it's coming from, from where his feathers are. I've highlighted the legs with a bit of dark pink and I've just taken a bit of a rusty coloured brown Colours were, the colours were actually looking a bit flat and so I've warmed it up with this sort of warm brown and other than that I think the wren is, himself is finished and I do not like this stitching here so I think I'm taking that out. I've taken the stitches out of the leather, I've cut some leaves out I'm going to try and get a bramble stem in. And so what I'm doing, I've got, um, just going to anchor that down. I've got two strands of a purpley brown and one strand of a normal brown. And I'm just anchoring it with a knot on my needle. And then I'm just going to make a twisted, a twisted thread. So I'm just going to twist it and twist it until it's really tightly going to go back on itself. I've made my bramble stem and I've couched it down. I've cut out a couple of leaves because the main thing is, is I want the leather to be not loose and also I want to not have all those holes necessarily. So what I thought was I could have a lovely bramble leaf coming off here but I could utilise this piece of green as well. So. That's what I'm going to try and do. I'm going to come up through this hole on the on the branch and come down across this leaf. So I shall go up this one. I'm not even going to follow the shape. I'm going to put the shape in that I want it to be. I think that is going to work, so I'll come down for the leaf stem. And back up again. I'm going to do a little long tail, come up at one side, down at the other back up on the spine at the middle to make a Y. And then a long, a long tail 
down the spine of the, the rib of the leaf. That's worked fine. I'll just finish the last few ribs on the leaves. I decided to give the little wren a blackberry to eat. Doing French knots. Started with green. I put black and I just thought I'd put a couple of red ones in just to show that it was they were changing colour. So here he is finished, my little wren, sitting on a mossy lichen branch with a blackberry and some blackberry leaves. And I think he's come out well. And I'm really pleased the way that leftover piece of cushion fabric has looked as well. It's just like a watery colour background, which has worked well, as did, as did the leaf that I didn't even applique on. I'm quite pleased I did it that way too. Uh, what's definitely inspiring me though is the moss and the lichen. It just makes me want to do my mushroom sculpture now because I've been wanting to do that for months. I hope you all enjoyed that. I'm absolutely over the moon with the whole thing, but really, especially, even though I love the bird, that's making me desperate to do the embroidered moss on my ex lampshade that's going to turn into a mushroom sculpture. I feel that's going to be coming up quite soon because my fingers are itchy for doing it. And my fingers have also been itchy for knitting. And look what I made. I did, I got Claire Garland's lovely little um, knitting pattern for the frog that I've seen all over. Well, maybe it's just me seeing it all over. Uh, the little videos of the frog having picnics and everything. And I just couldn't resist it. And I knew that my knitting needle fingers were itchy for knitting. And so that actually didn't take very long. And it's so super cute. I think it's the start of my Christmas present making. Because I know some people who would quite like to have one of these. Anyway, I'm going to just wrap it up there and say thank you for watching. Thank you for commenting. And subscribing and um, yeah thank you my little channel is growing nicely I'm pleased to say and all to do with embroidery as well who would have thought um, so I'll see you next time with whatever it is probably a bit, probably a flower page uh, and that's nearly finished really so bye from Marion's World see you next time happy crafting everyone bye